What's going on you guys? Welcome back to another Screw Toy action figure review and today we'll be looking at the Marvel Legends Infinity Saga Odin and I found this at my local Target. They had about I want to say maybe five of them and I decided to pick them up. Wasn't looking forward to this figure really. Uh, having it in hand still kind of eh, not really too excited about it but uh, let's get a close look here at the packaging and then the figure itself. So it is your standard Infinity Saga packaging. You get the logo for the Thor movie, the 2011 Thor movie, Marvel Studios Legend Series, the Infinity Saga, the name of the character Odin, Marvel Studios, so you don't forget again. If you're four and under, you're not allowed to play with it. You get the Avengers logo. Again, not too sure why, if it is, because it is the Thor movie. Um, on the side, you get the mural that you got on the previous packaging of the Infinity Saga, the ones that I reviewed for the Iron Mongor and Obadiah Stain 2-pack, the Thanos and Iron Man 2-pack. Uh, they all had the same mural. Obviously, shrunken down for a single pack. You get Marvel Studios, again, so you don't forget, Infinity Saga, Avengers logo. On the back, you get a read-up on Odin right here, and then you get a poster of the Thor movie from 2011. Uh, Marvel Legends series on the side you get the continuation of that mural except the Guardians, Ant-Man and Hawkeye, uh, Avengers logo, Thor, Odin, Marvel Studios so don't forget again. On the bottom not much if you need the barcode there it is. Enough about this packaging let's get a closer look here at the figure itself. Here we have a shot of all the accessories that he does come with um, which is a pretty fair amount for this figure. We get two head sculpts, two sets of hands, this uh, staff, spear looking thing, and his helmet. Uh, now getting a close look at his hands, he does come with a, I guess, staff holding hand. So he can hold his uh, spear, staff, whatever you want to call it. And it is on a vertical hinge, so I do like that. Uh, and then he also comes with a, a similar hand on the, actually, nope, they're the exact same hands, just... For the opposite sides but it does have a trigger finger there so if you want you know Odin blasting at the frost giants he can actually let me try. Right here. put this in here oh, hold on. put this in here and, and put his finger in there he does come with a trigger finger but uh you can't really fit any guns in there which is kind of odd but yeah if you can find a gun for Odin he does have a trigger finger there so he can, um, you know, pull that clock on those frost giants. He does come with one fist. Unfortunately, uh, it doesn't come with another one. So th th this is for the right hand, and uh, which we got one for the left, but um, it is what it is. And then we get a left open gesture hand, kind of just like uh, he's reaching out for something. Or, or, or I'm not too sure, but yeah, not too bad. And then we get his staff right here which does look pretty nice. It is just molded in a goldish bronze, you know, color. It doesn't look bad at all. I wish there was some paint over this staff right here. Some some gold paint, bronze paint to really, really help bring out all those details right there. But not too bad. You can see all these little nines sculpted into the spear. So not too bad. And then you get his helmet right here which i really do like again it is just in a bronze gold color but um some paint would have really really helped this helmet out to really help bring that detail and sculpt out a lot let me dim things down a little bit here we go yeah so you can see all that sculpting in the back big wings on the side for that iconic thor look and it does go over this head scope right here. Might as well get a close look at this too. It is a more serious toned down face with, you know, not too much expression in there. You can see the um, eye patch right there, nicely detailed. Again, painted in that dull bronze color. I wish it was painted a little bit um, more metallic. You get, you know, his eye and then that scar and then the beard is actually painted pretty well. And that white paint. And then the hair as well. 
and it does have a gray wash to really really help those details come out I really like how they did that and then the helmet just does slip on just as so and I think that looks pretty dope yeah unfortunately I don't think it fits onto his smiling head too well you can kind of force it down on there and it kind of works but yeah it's mostly meant for this head as you can see it just slid on that one really well but this one getting a close look pretty much the exact same except his hair is a lot more voluminous because he's been conditioning it <laughs> no but uh yeah this one's a lot more puffy a lot more has more volume to his hair and that is because you know it's not squished down or flat to help that helmet fit but yeah almost exact same head sculpt except for the hair and he does have a small smile in there so if you want a happy anthony hopkins there you go and the likeness is pretty spot on to anthony hopkins i've seen a couple people say that the likeness isn't there and i have to disagree i think it is it does look like odin from the door movie but enough about these accessories let's get a closer look here at the figure itself here is odin in all his glory and um at first i wasn't too excited about this figure now that i've played with him a little bit um he's a little bit better i am pretty impressed in some aspects of his articulation and some of the designs that they did on this figure which are pretty impressive uh here we have odin up close again the likeness is very very nice uh nicely done i think hasbro did a really well job on that face sculpt you can kind of see they missed a the mark there just a little bit on the eye patch um but yeah man i think they did a pretty well job overall sculpt paint looks pretty good so you can see that this armor plate right here on his upper chest is done in a nice metallic plastic i don't believe that's paint or anything that is just a, a metallic uh, plastic that it was molded in and then you kind of see some right here that they did like a um, a bronze metallic overspray i know they did they painted over here obviously the metallic brown bronze and you can kind of see the missed mark a little bit but you can kind of see over here a little bit of an overspray not sure if it's the reflection off of no no yeah it looks kind of like they have a little bit of bronze color mixed in that silver plastic you can see the top two discs are just silver plastic the middle ones um as well silver but then you get down to these bottom ones they kind of have like i'm not too sure like a little bit of that bronze around the corners which at first i thought it was a mistake um that you know qc issue on this figure but no i looked at all the other copies and as well they had that bronze painted over it a little bit sloppy could have been a little bit better but not too bad and then you get around the trim of the belt all nicely painted not too bad they missed the mark just a little bit right there but not enough to bother me and this is a separate floating piece belt piece so that is very nice you get into the inner forms you can kind of see that brown leather texture in there and then you see these silver wings kind of painted in there the shoulder pads are a separate piece that float around with the arm you get to the gauntlets nicely painted silver see some of that bronze and those straps but then it kind of stops right there which is kind of odd and it is the same thing over here and on top of the form you can see all that as well uh, it doesn't fully go throughout the whole form forearm maybe it's just the way it was designed but not too bad then you get to the middle which we already spoke about uh, the back same thing as you can see right there that, that's a good good example right there if I can get it to focus that it is a silver a silver plastic with kind of a brownish hue to it which is kind of weird really weird but then yeah you get down back to the belt it is a separate floating piece and the skirt piece right there pants not much to talk about uh they're brown have all these lines in them and it kind of looks similar to the infinity war thor's pants uh except in brown and then not black nice details here on the knee pads the boots look really nice they have a nice leather texture 
between the straps in there. And uh, you can see a nice silver color here on the trim, but none on the bottom ones. It's, that's kind of odd. They did it right here and not here and here. You get to the bottom of the feet, not much. Um, he does have pegos. The cape is a nice, real nice, soft plastic. Real pliable. It reminds me a lot of the uh, McFarlane Toys Justice League Batman. Like that it's real soft and rubbery and not real stiff and heavy. So I really do like that they went this route. But yeah. Now let's get a closer look at Odin's articulation. Now getting a close look at Odin's articulation with the helmet. He can look up, man, quite Oh, without popping the head off. Pop it back on. He can look a decent amount, um, considering that he does have long hair. Uh, he can look a great amount down. Uh, and that is because the head is on a dumbbell joint, and it has a lot of clearance right there. I don't know how well you can see. And this neck piece, man, I really like how they did this neck piece if you move both of those together. Look how much that neck piece moves. Great amount. So great movement out this head. You can look that much down. This much up. He does have a decent amount of head pivot. Not too crazy. But a good amount. Uh, his arms are on ball joints. So it can rotate a full 360. And that shoulder piece is a separate piece. So it moves with it. He has upper bicep swivel. Double jointed arms bent in a great amount. His staff holding hands are on vertical hinges, so they hinge up and down. And then you get the regular hands, the fist, and the open gesture hands to hinge um, horizontally. So they'll go up and down, full 360. Uh, he, his his uh, upper torso is on a ball joint here at the waist, so he can pivot uh, just a little bit to the sides. Nothing too crazy. He can crunch that much forward which isn't much and a lot further back which is a decent amount so not the greatest torso articulation but good enough uh, he does have twists so you can rotate a full 360 if you like uh, he has upper thigh cut he can bend his knees in uh, a good amount because he does have double jointed knees but uh, can't kick his ass because his calf gets in the way on his thigh no boot cut or anything. His feet are on hinges, so it can hinge that much forward and that much back. And he does have, yeah, ankle pivot. Now getting a close look at some size comparisons. Here we have Odin next to the Mark 85 Iron Man from the Thanos and Iron Man 2 pack from the Infinity Saga that this figure also comes in. Next, backing up a little bit, here we have the Marvel Legends Thanos. Next, here we have him next to the Iron Mongor from the Infinity Saga line. And last but not least, here we have Odin next to the SH Frigo Arts Final Battle Endgame Thor. And unfortunately, I do not have any Marvel Legends Thor to compare Odin with. But, uh, as you can see, <laughs> this kind of doesn't work out as Thor is smaller. As he is true 6 inch scale and Odin is 6.5. Um, you can kind of fudge it, move them into the background, kind of make them look a little bit smaller with perspective. But as is, uh, doesn't really work out too well. I think Thor should definitely be a little bit more taller around this height. Uh, so, unfortunately, don't have any other Marvel Legend Thors to compare them with. But there you have it. And here we have Odin on the rotating base. And overall, man, he's uh, an okay figure. Again... Uh, just because I personally wasn't excited about it, I wasn't really looking too forward to it. Um, he's okay. Not a bad figure overall, though. He has great paint apps, great scope, and great articulation. So if you're looking forward to an Odin figure, I would say definitely pick this figure up as it is not a bad figure, just not for me. Uh, so the excitement was not there. But if you were definitely looking forward to this figure, if you need an Odin figure in your collection, then definitely, definitely pick this guy up as he is a great figure. I cannot stress that enough that this guy is a great figure. Uh, just not for me as uh, I was not excited for this figure. But overall, man, I would rate this figure without my biased opinion a 
solid nine. He comes everything you want with uh, that, that should come with an Odin. He comes with the staff, his helmet, his cape, his iconic costume from the first movie, as it is um, a figure that's supposed to re represent Odin from the first movie. He comes with several sets of hands, two head scopes, a helmet, the spear. So it's it's a great figure. Again, a great figure, just not for me. Um, but yeah, man, enough of me going on and on about this figure <laughs> and how I uh, I personally thought it was kind of boring. But yeah, man, make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.